In Creole Parametric, you can use multi-body modeling to split one part into two. And this is especially important when the geometry from the two parts have to line up. For example, if you have threads between the two parts. Here I have a completed example. Here we have the multi-body part. I'm going to activate this cross section. And you can see the split line in the middle and how we have the threads continue from one part to another part. Let's go to the resulting assembly. So again, we have an assembly. You can see the two parts in different colors. Let me activate the cross section. So again, you can see how the threads continue seamlessly from one part to another. Let's take a look at how to do this. And this duplicates one of the cases that Martin Neumuller has demonstrated. So I don't want to act like I'm original in coming up with this. Let's create our brand new part. And I'm going to call this thread split, since I'll be splitting a thread. I will use my default template and click the OK button. Let me turn on my datum plane display. For my first feature, I am going to use a blend. Let's go to the Shapes drop-down menu and choose Blend. For my first section, I'm going to sketch. Let's hit the Define button. I'll sketch on the datum plane top. Let's click Sketch to go into Sketch mode. And I'll create a circle right at the intersection of my sketch references with a diameter of 10. That's good. Let me hold down the right mouse button and hit the check mark to get out of there. For the distance to section 2, let's choose a value of 12. Let's go to the Sections tab and click the Sketch button. For my second sketch, let me right mouse click to get to my menu to create a circle. And I'll use a slightly smaller diameter to use a value of 6. Hit the check mark, and there you can see a preview of the geometry that I am getting. Let's use the thicken option from the dashboard. I'm use a thickness of one. That is good. Let's hit the check mark. And now I have my blend feature created. I want to create a couple of ribs on the side so that these two parts can be connected together once they are divided. Let's click the datum plane called front and click the sketch tool. Let me go to turn off my datum plane display to unclutter the screen. Also, I'm going to change to a no hidden line mode. Let's go to the references and pick the outside edge of the part. Let me go to my sketch view over here. And for the sketch, I'm gonna create a circle Let's make it tangent to the bottom. Now let's sketch in a couple of lines over here and just snap into the part. Oh, need another line. Let's create a line going from here to there in the part. That's good. Let's change this diameter and change this value over here. Make it a little bit smaller. Make this diameter smaller too. Looks a little giant. I am going to drop in a point here that will help me later on. I need to create a datum axis. I'll use my friend Squiggle Trim to get rid of this in here. So now I have an open sketch indicated by the two red boxes. Let's right mouse click and hold and use the check mark. Now I'm going to rotate slightly. Let's go back to a shaded with edges display. And with that sketch still selected, I'm going to use the profile rib tool. And let's make this a symmetric depth of 0.5. And so that's one thing I like about the rib tool with the open sketch. We'll follow along the geometry, even though this is conical in shape. That's good for that one. Let's hit the check mark over here. Let me turn on my axis and point display. The sketch is hidden. Let me unhide it. And I'm going to create a datum axis. And I'll select the datum plane called point zero. I think I sketched on the datum plane called front. That's good. Now I have an axis. I can click the OK button. With the axis still selected, let's create a hole. I will hold down the control key to specify the starting surface for the hole. There it's giving me a diameter of 0.25. That's good. Let's right click over the 
depth drag handle for the hole and I'm going to choose two next and hit the check mark. So that is good. I no longer need sketch one. Let's hide that again. And I'll select these three features using the shift key in the model tree and then group them together. And then let's do a mirror about the datum plane called right. Hit the check mark. And now I've got some tabs in here that I can use after I split the part to attach them to one another. Okay, so let's see. Next thing that is up, we need to have our threads in the part. I'm just going to hide some of the datums in here again to unclutter my screen. And let's see, I'm going to create, let me go to a no hidden, or let me go to a hidden line mode. Let's create a helical sweep. If I go to the sweep drop down menu, there's the command there, helical sweep. And I'm going to generate this as a solid for the references. I need the helix profile. Let's sketch on the datum plane front again. Let's hit the define button and select front and hit the sketch button. And now for my references, I'm going to select the top surface of the model as well. And the inside silhouette edge. Let's hit the solve button, close, turn off the datum plane display as well as the point display and the axis display. Let's go to our sketch view. And for the profile, this is going to need, let's see, a center line. Throw that in here. And the actual profile is going to be a line. And I like to start it above and beyond where I'm doing it. Let me start from below so that my start point will be there and it locks into the line. Let's sketch about over here. And let's change these dimensions. If I have it start right on the line there, then there will be a portion that isn't properly threaded. So again, that's why I like to have the dimension go beyond the extent of where the thread is going to go. And I've got the arrow there indicating the correct start point. Let's right click and check marks get out of here. Let me see for the pitch value. Let's change this to a value of 1. Everything on the References tab looks good. Let's then go to the Sketch button on the dashboard. For my references, let's select in the Silhouette Edge. That way I can snap into that. Let me hit the Solve button and close. I just want to make sure that I'm using that as a sketch reference because I want to throw in a center line and I want the center line to be perpendicular to the sides that it's going to go on. All right, for my shape, let's sketch in a triangle. This should be 60 degrees. And another dimension that I want, let me right click and hold. Maybe I still have something selected. Let's go to the dimension tool, select this line over here. I want this to be a value of 0.5. And let's change this other angle to 60 degrees. That is good for my shape. Let's hit the check mark over in here. And I can see the preview of what's being generated. Let's change from uh, hidden line to wireframe. Right now, this is adding material. Let's choose to remove material. And now I can see the threads that I'm getting in there. That looks good for what I want. Let's hit the check mark. And so now I have the basic geometry of my part. Let's go back to shading with edges. I want to take a look at the cross section. I also want to change the color. Let's make it a nice color. Let me scroll down in my extended palette over here. I like a nice blue. And let's also go to create a cross section. Let's try a cross section in the X direction. That is good for that. Let's always rename our cross sections, call this cross section A. And I can show some hatching inside of there. Have that surface be a slightly different blue color. So there you can see the cross section. Right now the hatching is a little far spaced. Let me right click and choose the edit hatching option. Let's make it a little denser in there. Applying OK. So there's my cross section for the part in here. I'm actually going to split 
the part along the other direction. Let me deactivate the cross section, but I'll leave the cross hatching visible inside of here. Let me turn on my datum plane display again. So now I need to split this into two parts. Let's go back to the model tab. You can see in the bodies folder that we only have one body inside of here. I can use the split body command. And so for the body to split, well, we'll just select body one. For the splitting object, let me make sure that's the active collector, splitting object. Let's select the datum plane called front, and it's showing one side that's going to be split away. Another option that you have in here is to expend, extend the splitting object, but I'm using a datum plane, which is infinite to begin with. So that's good for the split. Let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. So now we can see how the parts are split in here. And now we can create two parts from this one part. Let's start off by selecting body one. And I'll right click on it and choose create part from body. Let's rename this. I'll call this thread split A. Hit the OK button. Now I've got this in its own separate window. Let's change its color. Let's go to the view drop down or view menu. And let me make this, uh, let's use that, this pretty color and apply that. Oops. For some reason it's not taking it. Let's see if I can apply it to the body. Oh well, let's go back to the original thread split part. Let's do the same thing for body two. Right click and choose create part from body. And I'll call this one thread split B. And hit the OK button. So there we have the second part. Let's see what happens when we bring them together in an assembly. I'm going to turn off my datum plane display. Let's create a new assembly. And I'll call this my thread split assembly. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm using the start assembly that I want to. Let's bring in the first component. I will click the assemble button. Let's go to in session. So here's thread split A. Hit the open button. And I'm just going to right click and use the default constraint. Hit the check mark. And so there we have thread split A. Let's now assemble in the other thread split. I'll use in session to get to it since I haven't saved it yet. Let me click the open button. And once again, I will right click and choose default constraint. And based on the external copy geometry features in here, they are located in the right place. So now you can see the two components that are located in here. Now I can use a color to distinguish between them. Let me just use this and pick that. And also let's go back to the section command. Let's try cross section in the X direction again and show the hatch pattern. Let's, I always like to cap the surfaces. You can see the different hatching between the two parts. But in this way, we split the two parts. But again, because we start off with the multi body, we're making sure that the threads line up between the two different parts that are going to be assembled together. So there you have an example of splitting a single part into two parts to make sure that the geometry lines up between them. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.